Hello, welcome to HITC Sport. Right, we're all guilty of overhyping footballers after good performances. It happens all the time. I'm going to take a look at every Premier League club and find each team's current player who, yeah, was hyped up to insane proportions after a certain game. Right, let's go. Arsenal at Rob Holding versus Chelsea 2017. Okay, let's be honest, there's a bunch of current Arsenal players who were hyped up to the eyeballs after a certain game. Like when David Luiz burst onto the scene with a goal and a 2-1 Chelsea winner for Man United back in 2011, you had pundits describing him as potentially the best defender on planet Earth, despite him quite clearly having brain tissue made of marshmallow. As it also ripped up the 2010 World Cup, even Joe Willock drowned in hyperball last season. But no, the real answer here is Rob Holding. Go back three years ago and he was starting an FA Cup final win over Chelsea, mostly keeping Diego Costa stuck down his shorts. Apart from that moment he let him score the equaliser, but let, let's just forget about one now, that doesn't suit the narrative. After the game, Arsenal fans thought they'd found the next Tony Adams, a future world-class England captain. Yeah, it's three years later, the Gunners still have a defence made of cardboard while holding, is now 25 and was almost binned off to Newcastle on loan. And as for England caps, Garrett Southgate would probably rather sooner pick his own mother. Aston Villa, Jack Greenish versus Liverpool 2015. Okay, listen, yes, yeah, Jack Greenish is a good player, and yeah, saying that in Ireland would probably come with a prison sentence. Christ above, I'd probably have my tongue ripped out and fed to the pigeons. But I will say this, he was overhyped back in 2015. Yes, as a 20 year old kid, he pulled the strings midfield as Aston Villa beat Liverpool in an FA Cup semi final at Wembley, assisting Fabian Delft's winner. It was great. Yes, he ran rings on Steven Jarrett, but I should hope so. He was 15 years younger than him. The hype after the game was borderline insane. But look at the comments on the YouTube video. Kinda reminds me of a young George Best. The way he plays reminds me of young David Beckham. Lex or Kelmy, can't wait till he joins Liverpool. Pick Ireland, Jack, please. Oh, th this one is awkward. What a fiend. Would love to see him line off for Ireland. Okay, I'm gonna stop looking at the comments now. This is the game which made him a super. Star. No wonder he switched international allegiances after the game. But has he turned into the English George Best or a Brummy Raquelme? No, at his peak, he's not even at the level one matter was at. Brighton Alam Lallana versus Middlesbrough 2016. Okay, Alam Lallana was a good player, sure, but the hype towards the end of 2016 was ridiculous. Sure, he was the form player at Liverpool under Jurgen Klopp, scoring two and a three nil win at the Riverside, but the media went overboard. Sure, it was a good win. It moved the Reds second in the league before Christmas, but Lallana was being held up as a future captain. This was the game which got him linked to Barcelona, Juventus, and PSG. Why? Because he managed to score two goals against a defence consisting of Ben Gibson and Callum Chambers? What a mental month for Adam Lallana. Burnley, Ben Gibson versus Man City 2015. Okay, I could have picked Robbie Brady's winning goal against Italy or 2016, a moment which caused every Irishman on the planet to combust with relief. But no, that was a goal. Just one moment. Yes, we were willing to offer Brady up our firstborn child, but nobody was blind into thinking he was the next Damien Duff. One game that did trick the public though was a 22-year-old Ben Gibson captaining lonely Middlesbrough to a 2-0 FA Cup win at the Etihad. Sure, it was a good performance. He dealt with Sergio Aguero quite well, but I'm convinced it was this game which caused him to be linked with Man City every transfer in over about two years. I don't get the fuss. Five years later and he's out on loan at Norwich. I mean, come on. Chelsea, Ross Barkley versus QPR 2011. Okay, surprising one this because this was a terrible result for Everton. Kicking off the 11-12 season with a 1-0 defeat at home to newly promoted QPR. Don't get me wrong, I'm sure David Moyes felt like drowning his defence in a shallow ditch, but the bright spark was still Ross Barkley. The 17-year-old kid dominated the headlines in his debut, was held up as the next Gaza, another Wayne Rooney, already being linked with Champions League level clubs. I mean, I guess he did get there in the end, but he's 26, stuck on the Chelsea bench, and linked with Aston Villa. So clearly, he's the modern day Steve Sidwell. Crystal Palace, Christian Benteke versus Liverpool 2015. Yeah, exact same game as Jack Greenish. Epic up semi final, Christian Benteke bullies Liverpool defence from start to finish, scores the equalising goal for Aston Villa, and I'm convinced it was this game which persuaded Liverpool to chuck 30 million at him that summer, but it was this game, this all round centre forward masterclass, which led people to think he was the next Didier Drogba. But of course, nowadays, as he rots on the Crystal Palace bench, with a recent goal scoring record less impressive than Kieran Clark's, oh good Christ, what was all the fuss about? Everton, Hamas Rodriguez versus Uruguay 2014. Okay, there's only one answer here. This was one of the most hyped individual performances of all time. Two goals for Colombia and a World Cup quarter final win over Uruguay, including one of the most outrageous volleys ever attempted. This game was the footballing equivalent to Jack Bate bringing out the Zuela calendar video. It completely blew up his career. This was the game which drew comparisons to Maradona, had personal awards rammed down his throat, and got him a £75 million move to the biggest club on planet Earth. Not bad for a lucky strike. Fulham Alexander Mitrovic versus Arsenal 2014. Okay, definitely not Alexander Mitrovic's game against Arsenal 2015, when he was sent off on his Newcastle debut. What a great start. No, this one was a year earlier, when as a 21-year-old centre forward scores a last-minute equaliser for Andelect in a 3 3 draw at the Emirates Stadium. This is the game which chucked him into the European shop window. Half of the continent's elite clubs were apparently queuing up to sign the Serbian wonder kid. So when Newcastle got him, it looked like a coup that they stole in a march on one of the most coveted youngsters on the globe. Geordies were tipping him to emulate Alan Shearer. Yeah, no, within two years he was stuck at a championship bench behind Daryl Murphy. Good lord. Leeds, Patrick Bamford versus Man City 2015. Yeah, same game as Gibson, that 2 0 Middlesbrough shock win at Man City. Patrick Bamford scored that day, tricking the world into thinking that yes, he would be able to cut his teeth in the Premier League. I mean, if he could score against the Champions 
champions of England, why not every other team? Christ, maybe he could lead the line for Chelsea after all. Yeah, no, th this was all stupidity. Not a chance. He's since played in the Premier League for five different teams and mostly looked like other cats sick. Leicester, Clichy, Iheanacho versus Man United 2016. Well, the media were fawning over Jamie Vardy after Terry Man United's defense of shreds in that 5-3 comeback win for Leicester City back in 2014. But considering what he's done since, what he's achieved, I don't think that was overhyped. Let's go with Clichy Iheanacho instead. When he, as a young striker, came into the Man City team to score one and set up another in a 2-1 derby day win at Old Trafford. Most assumed he'd go on to become what Gabriel Jesus has. A 20 goal a season striker battling it out with Sergio Aguero up front. Instead, no, he's a fat lump stable to Brendan Rodgers' bench with just 12 league goals scored since that derby day win four years ago. Christ, Jesus hits those numbers in about six weeks. Liverpool James Miller versus Chelsea 2002. Yeah, we're going back a while for this. Christ, well, this was back when Curtis Jones was sucking on his thumb and in his pants. Don't worry, Kurt, I still do that now. Listen, Miller is an outstanding pro. He's gone on to have an incredible career, but he was never going to quite live up to his early hype now, was he? Go back to December 2002. As a 16-year-old local kid winger at Leeds, he scores his second Premier League goal, skipping past World Cup winning Marcel Desailly to spank it from the edge of the box in a 2-0 win over Chelsea. Suddenly, the English hype train went into meltdown. The kid was being compared to Michael Owen, Wayne Rooney, he was only earning 80 quid a week. And that's not just because Leeds could barely afford to serve lunch at the canteen. He was 16, barely old enough to grow hair in his face. So it was a bit unhelpful to have a media tip him for future Ballon d'Ors. Man City, Raheem starting versus Reading 2012. Okay, well naturally this was always going to happen. Liverpool during the 12-13 season were mostly dismal. Couldn't score for love nor money. Desperately lacked to create a spark. And so the media chose to build up Raheem Sterling. And so, when the 17-year-old scored the winner in a 1-0 victory over Reading just a week before Halloween, to give Brendan Rodgers his first Anfield win, oh, the media went overboard. Now listen, this wasn't overhype. Sterling has emerged into a world-class player since, but he was expected to have the same impact at Anfield as Michael Owen, i.e. 20 goals a season and treble wins. So when he didn't do that, when he didn't score every week, that's why every man, woman and child laughed at his £50 million price tag. Yeah, I don't think they're laughing anymore. Man United, Phil Jones versus Aston Villa 2013. Okay, Anthony Martial deserves a shout. After scoring on his Man United debut in a 3-1 win over Liverpool, there was talk of how much money Monaco would receive if he won a Ballon d'Or. A Ballon d'Or from Mar- Really? But no, the answer is Phil Jones. You'll all remember that 3-0 win over Aston Villa in April 2013 for the Robin and Percy Hattrick that sealed your last Premier League title. But it was also the game where Sir Alex Ferguson said that Jones had the potential to be the club's greatest ever player. Player. I'm sorry, what? Were this whole city or Doncaster Rovers? That comment would still be a stretch. But Man United, a club who had George Best, Bobby Charlton, Cristiano Ronaldo, and for you thought Jones would be the best? Was he trying to insult the proud history and legacy of the club? I can only assume the guy had poured red wine into his morning shreddies. Jones isn't even in the top 500 players in the history of this club. Newcastle, Andy Carroll versus Aston Villa 2010. Yeah, this was game over for trying to keep Andy Carroll's hype on the down low. Sure, he was being held up as a Jordy number 9 homegrown striker, but nobody truly believed he was the next Alan Shearer until this game. Newcastle's first home match was promotion back to the Premier League, and it was against Aston Villa, the team who relegated them and laughed in their face. Up pops Carr with a hat-trick and a 6-0 revenge mission, all the hype that Harry Kane since had. That was bravely lumped on the shoulders of Carroll. I mean, he's only about 200 goals off Shearer's Premier League record, so you never know. Champions United, Jack Rodwell versus Man United 2010. Younger football fans are probably surprised there was ever any bit of hype about Jack Rodwell, because for the last eight years he's been a useless bench-warming lump of organs. Well, go back to February 2010. He comes on in the 88th minute for Everton and scores the third in a famous 3-1 win over Man United. I know he only played two minutes that day, but that was still enough for the media. In comes the links with Man United, tipping him as the eventual replacement for Roy Keane. Yeah, I'm pretty sure if you ever sat down with Keane and compared his career to Rodwell's, he'd probably bite off your ear. Southampton, Shea Adams versus Tottenham 2015. Okay, listen, Shea Adams is slowly coming into his own after mostly stinking up most of last season with Southampton. But five years ago, he had hype melting out his ears. January 2015, League Cup semi-final, second leg, Sheffield United are 1-0 down, hope to Spurs, and then an 18-year-old Adams comes on with 16 minutes left, and immediately scores two within five minutes of his arrival, turning the tie in its head. Sure, Christian Eriksen equalised as he spurs through, but it's too late. Adam has spent that year being linked with half the Premier League. Tottenham, Gareth Bale versus Inter Milan. Okay, this wasn't really overhyped because Gareth Bale did emerge into another world star. But still, some Tottenham fans remember this performance as if they'd won the game. Yeah, am I the only one who remembers this was a Spurs defeat? It was actually pretty embarrassing. In a Champions League group stage game, Tottenham were 4-0 down away to Rafa Benitez's Inter Milan after just 35 minutes. I'm sorry, but that is utterly shocking. Yes, Bale did rally in the second half, scoring a hat trick but the only story in the British press was how he ripped European champions apart. Uh, are we forgetting those goals didn't mean anything? This was a Tottenham defeat against a struggling Inter Milan. They utterly capitulated in the first half. But now the press didn't concentrate on that. It was all on Bale. Yet swear he'd won them the game. West Brom, Hav Robson Canoe versus Belgium 2016. This was the goal which made Hav Robson Canoe's career something other than a forgettable championship footnote. Sure, it was a big moment for Wales. Cruyff turning the Belgian defence to score the second in a shock 3-1 Euro 2016 quarterfinal win. Huge moment, sure. But the way Robson Canoe milked this goal for all it was worth, suddenly he was on the front page of magazines, doing in-depth interviews about a three-second 
moment. A natural instinct that he probably didn't even have time to think about. Suddenly his agent was drumming up interest from Sevilla and Atletico Madrid, who let's not forget had just reached the Champions League final. So being linked with Robinson Canu, an average championship striker off the back of just one goal, oh, it was just laughable. West Ham, Jack Wilshere versus Barcelona 2011. With the rise of Tiki Taka football at the time, the English media were praying for a natural ball playing Xavi and Iniesta type players to come through. So imagine how much they were salivating when a teenage wheelchair pulled the strings in a 2-1 Champions League quarter-final first leg win for Arsenal against Barcelona. But sadly for England, no, he most definitely wasn't English savvy. Wolves, Keanu Hoover versus Wolves 2019. Okay, did we all just fall into the trap of hyping up youngsters yet again? Because when Keanu Hoover made his Liverpool debut against Wolves in the FA Cup, becoming the club's youngest ever FA Cup representative at just 16 years of age, suddenly he was being tipped to become a Liverpool legend. But no, instead, it's actually Wolves he's ended up at. What happened there? And if that's the end of it, I'll tell you in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and as always, I'll talk to you in a while.